So this is season two coming out of Calling Current, which is very exciting. Because I think you've pretty much now covered the gamut of things to do in life, right? Now this is like radio is like the next level, and it's the theater of the mind. So tell us a little bit about what made you do um, What made me do radio? Uh, I just feel like I should do everything, uh, and I think I'm pretty available at most of the time. Uh, being accessible and affable is part of my personality, and I just felt that radio would have a tremendous reach, and I do it for free anyway, giving people love advice. When you're single for that long in your life, you tend to kind of meet troubled couples all the time. Uh, husbands, wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, boyfriends and boyfriends, girlfriends and girlfriends, and I think that I invariably end up giving copious amounts of advice. So I thought, why not get paid for it? <laughs> It's one thing to make about love, right? It's a little bit. Please. It is. And in fact, we have a disclaimer right at the beginning that I'm not a professionally trained individual like a therapist or a psychiatrist or you know, somebody. So my advice should be taken at just at that level, knowing that I may be uh, just giving you advice on a personal level and I'm not authorized to give you that advice. Having said that, when I give the advice, I don't pretend like I'm not authorized. Because I give very, very sincere advice and I've broken a few relationships. Oh, <laughs> but do you ever get advice that came from your movies? Like there was a, a moment that you ever referenced that was saying, this movie made just a work. No, no, no. What, what we show in the movies is ridiculous. <laughs> people's life by giving those kind of situations. Uh, those are meant for like PDR. Uh, but uh, not for people like you know, give rigid advice. You have to kind of really get into the center of the situation and then you know be very and I take it very seriously. I take every call very seriously. I really get into it. That's really important. And now we have a love conference and today's love conference is an opportunity for everyone to actually get to know the people on the stage and really delve into their thoughts. Neha, I want to know what is the worst piece of advice of love advice that you ever given from Karan Audio? From Karan. Um, so I remember calling him in season one and asking him that uh, my question was that um, should I go with a hot guy or should I go with the intelligent guy? And Karan was like, what a stupid question, go with a hot guy. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to And then it's, what happened? Listen, it's intelligent to go with the hot guy. Okay. Uh, I think the audio. audio. Very rarely Neha's not heard. Hand mic de do isko bhaiya. No. Thank you. Pehle hi tha hand. Now can you hear me? Oh yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Now Juhu can hear me. <laughs> And then uh, when I was uh, about to get married, the only person I think who knew apart from my parents was Karan. And I, was, I still remember I was like lying in his bedroom like that, like a lash, and I was like, Karan, what should I do? And he was like, just get married. What's the big deal? And I was like, can you simplify this for me? And he said the most beautiful thing. I know, you know, he comes with this humor and all of that, but deep down he's a hardcore romantic. As much as he doesn't like to admit it, he is. He likes the idea of it. And he said that, you know, just treat this like the intermission of your life, like a movie is. And more often than not, the second half is usually better. And that was the best advice he's given me till date. Or anybody has given me on love. I believe, like you said, that you asked him whether you should go for someone who's intelligent or good looking. Now, recently, you got married. And I think Angad asked you, now, who am I, considering you, you gave her this advice? Oh, what did you say? You're going to be talking about Nasir. Well, I'll just say Angad is good looking. <laughs> I mean, and it wasn't an either or, but he is good looking. He is good looking. <laughs> And there's a dot, dot, dot. The rest of it you can hear on the next... He married season. Neha. I mean, do you think I should think he's intelligent? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought... That I thought he's going to say that he doesn't have to worry about anything because the intelligence department is taken care of by me. Exactly. But That's what I meant. I didn't know that it was going to be such I, a big I mean, insult. Because isn't marriage all about balancing things. So you bring in the intelligence, he brings in the good looks. No, that's fine. I mean, <laughs> we'll give both to him. <laughs> I love that. Okay, now this is your opportunity before we get further deeper into the love conference to ask Karan 
for a piece of love advice? From me? Yes. Intyaz <laughs> is a master of love. I mean, wow. he's somebody who can give advice. If you were to ask Karan something. There are so many things. There are so many things I'd like to ask Karan about love. And uh, some of them are so filmy and mushy that I'd rather just like in the middle Go of the night Go for it. You know this audience will love it. <laughs> um, What's the relationship, Karan, this is a, like a DNM, okay? Uh -huh. What's the relationship between self-love and love for someone else? Oh, what's the relationship between self-love and love for someone else? I mean, do you have to be in love with yourself or not in love with yourself to be a better lover? Let's put it that way. Oh, that is deep, Imtiaz. Uh, I think that, to put it simply, I can only talk about myself, is that I'm not somebody who ha who's full of self-love. In fact, I have a lot of self-doubt, I have a lot of apprehensions about myself. In fact, I'm, I have low self-esteem issues when it comes to me in a relationship. Uh, that's why I think I tend to give much more to a relationship and invariably land up in a one-sided one because I have too much to offer. I think people who are full of themselves and not full of themselves would be a negative connotation, but who genuinely love themselves and sometimes with good and bad reason, I think they are incapable of extreme love. Because somewhere love is a selfless emotion. You know, it cannot come with the baggage of your own self-love. Because then even when you love someone, you're so happy with yourself that you're loving someone, that, that you carry that feeling into the relationship and it's all about you. And I think a true relationship has to be about us and you, not just me. You know, it has to be about like two people. Awesome. I love that. And in fact, that's what I've heard as well. Like love isn't what you feel about someone else, it's what they make you feel about yourself. And there are two differences, like loving yourself and being obsessive about yourself, there also is a difference, you know. You could like yourself, love yourself is fine, but if you're obsessively like all about you, like if you're like deeply a megalomaniac or obsessive about yourself, it's very difficult for you to contribute into a relationship. Then you have to call Karat. Then you have to call me. <laughs> yeah. I, want to, I want to ask him another question. Mm -hmm. He just said that in the relationship that um, in the marriage of Angad and Neha, he's the good looking one. Right. What do you oh. saying about Neha then? Well, there's a difference between good looking and super sexy, right? <laughs> like, he's good looking. Yeah, yeah. And she's super what sexy. What is yeah. <laughs> Well, Neha has immense amount of sex appeal. I think that she does. She's tremendously hot. And from the time that I first met her to the time now, her intelligence is also a turn on. But also, I think her voice and her, her, her curves that are invariably covered by tapestry. But uh, she I knew this a, wasn't going to end well. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you're hot, Neha. You have to know that. Thank you, Karan. You have to own it, which you do quite I'm, a lot. I'm shaking right now because I know this is... Are you done? I'm this done. This is turning into what? a whole show, huh, by the yeah, way. I that know. was a real compliment. Please, just, just clap. <laughs> just clap. <laughs> well, I always ask Neha because she's so gorgeous and stunning why she wears like bed sheets, always. <laughs> I, I want to know why she's always bed, bath and beyond. <laughs> she wants people to imagine stuff. Yeah, I suppose. Mm. Okay, we have to move on I to like Ranvijay that. now. As I cover up a little more. <laughs> <laughs> So Ranvijay, your uh, Instagram is just adorable to follow. Now everyone would think of Ranvijay as this really macho, just like out there, roughing it out. But his Instagram is filled with the most adorable pictures of him and his wife. Yeah. And even this story, I think you met where none of, both of you That's were not... That's my wife you. posting for me, by the way. <laughs> She's got your pass. I believe you met when you were both at a party and neither of you were drinking and that's how you connected. Yep. So, so how, you know, how does someone like you, who's really like got all these girls running after him, find that one and have this beautifully cute relationship? Because that's what all girls are looking for. I'm from Punjab. Um, and uh, we've been brainwashed since we were young that if a girl's from London, you say yes. <laughs> um, she's actually somebody who didn't know what I did. So in your question, you had a part where you said girls running behind you. After about 10, 12 years of being, uh, doing what I do, I didn't know the agenda of women. I didn't know why they liked me. Was it my humor? Was it uh, my chivalry? What, what was it? Because they didn't even, I didn't even need to do anything at times. And, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Modest. And, and then, then there, was, there was a time when I met this girl who uh, didn't know what I did mm. and started liking me for that present between the two of us, right? And over a period of uh, months, she liked me for who I was, and uh, it was very refreshing. And uh, for me, 
I didn't even want to get married at one point and when I met her it just flipped and my mom was like main tenu kya si jab kudi aaugi you know so it, that's that man and uh, we connect on different levels and we're we're also uh, like you said i'm the adventurous kind she's just the opposite she would never step into a tent she's the luxury kind so we are showing each other different uh, different things in the world and i think that's why we're so attracted and it's like uh, you know opposites attract i love that and i'm sure you've seen so many variations of love stories especially when people call you right and it's amazing that you're going to actually have a second season everyone knows the show is bold you're super honest with people right yeah. but what was like the one call on ishq 104.8 where you were like oh my god i i don't know what to do like you were stunned uh, there were a couple of really um really strange calls there was one man who called me and said that he had a a, a girlfriend who he broke up with because he found a really hot girlfriend and uh, which this was, is your advice basically no so this is what he told me yeah. yeah maybe it was my advice so he found someone really hot and he said yaar sab kuch theek ja raha tha bahut hot hai lekin wo meri bhi girlfriend jo hot hai wo nahati nahi hai so i was like ha huh? he said ha wo bilkul nahi nahati aur maine bahut baar use deodorant diya shampoo diya sabun diya bahut sare hint pass kiye lekin she doesn't have a bath maine usko tip tip barsa pani bhi google pe ya youtube pe dikhaya ki nahati hui dekho kitni khoobsurat lagti hai ladki lekin phir bhi uske bawajood she was not having a bath so that he had a very big problem that she was just not bathing and uh, he said to main kya karu i said chhod do i said what do you mean nahati nahi hai how can you be with someone who stinks on a daily basis so he was like uh, ha main jab kiss karta hu to badboo aati hai aur ye so i was like uh, to bilkul chhod do i said kyun chhod diya tumne pehle girlfriend se liye hot nikle aise hot hot bhool jao hot ka kya fayda agar gandi hai to uh, he said so he said okay then he was the only follow up call i got at the end of the season when we did the finale he called and said are thank you i left them i've gone back to my girlfriend at least she has a bath you know and i'm happy so i was like chalo very good So I was quite perplexed initially because you don't realize, and there was this girl, daughter-in-law who called me. She just got married, and she said, "I've lied to my mother-in-law that I'm vegetarian uh, because actually he said, 'May chup chup ki office mein chicken khati hu.' <laughs> so she said, 'But once from my dabba, the mother-in-law has found this haddi uh, of the chicken. It was lying in the vegetarian dabba. So the mother-in-law has of course thrown this big fit, and she said, 'What do I do?' So I said, 'What do you mean? What will you do? You either choose chicken or your husband. No, one of the no, you as a one. You must be loving one more than the other. And then you decide. She was really so. There are problems like this that you would imagine are really not very large problems. But to them, it's the end of their life. Like they were like, what do I do? Then of course there are the emotional ones and the ones that there was. There was even a boy who rang me up, and it was quite, I mean, heartbreaking when he called me and said that you know, Arey, I've got married, but I'm not interested in my wife. I'm gay. So I said, then why did you get married? So he says no, but now she's getting upset. Ki I don't want to have sex with her. So I was like, obviously she's going to get upset. I mean, she's going to blame herself that you're not. She's probably feeling all kinds of you know issues in her head. I said, you go and tell she think, no, my mummy, papa, who can say, tell her, her heart will break. I said, what about your wife? I mean, like you know, so there are also those grave situations that you address and handle those emotionally. Some are whack job calls, but some are also really intense, serious situations. It's amazing that people are genuinely calling. You know, otherwise they'll always call with that one question: "I'm in love with no, my best friend." No, a lot of people like person. ask me and say, "Oh, are these made up?" I'm like, not at no, all. These yeah. are legit calls with people with real issues, and the fact that they're talking to you, it, you feel obliged to give them the right kind of yeah. advice. Yeah. Also, yeah. can I just sorry? Yeah. Because it's radio, it's easier for people. to just call you and be truthful because yeah, yeah. you're not watching them on television that's that's the kind of things that happen on like tv shows and stuff like that you can't really sometimes say yeah. the truth so that's why that that medium is so I effective and it's hysterical like some of the calls are just like there are thousands i mean we don't have that kind of time but like i get shocked like every time i put my like like literally my headphones off and i'm like i can't believe that these people have these issues like it's really crazy has anyone ever called you back and said that you know because you gave me this advice and i took it and now everything is gotten sorted have you had a case like that no no i mean a couple of them in the end called and thanked me for the advice i got while talking to me they they all saying oh thank you i never thought of that and i feel very really great about myself that i'm giving some but after, after applying it in their lives after yeah of course you know but has little... anyone has anyone also blamed you for the advice that you given <laughs> actually that i think the, the 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 they don't allow that access to come to me i'm sure there are many of those <laughs> as well and clearly that, clearly he's had a great track record and that's why we're launching season 2 yeah. yeah no but i'm telling you the, uh, yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> like there was this man who called me and he said, "Yeah, my mother doesn't leave me. She's always sitting on top of my head." And I just bitched the mother out. And I was like, you know. And then after two minutes, she said, "Arey, inse baat karo. Mere maa mere saamne baithi hui hai." And I'm like, "Why the hell are you calling me and asking me to give you advice about your mother who's clinging to you and who's the mother sitting there?" And she said, "Kaise laga mere bete ka problem?" I was like, "Kaise laga hoga?" She must have told him. Clearly, she hasn't left him even then. <laughs> I'm like, what kind of mad people are there in this world? Yeah. So Imtiaz, everyone knows your, you know, the relationship you have with your audience of making these beautiful love stories and these characters that you create. Now, in this modern day, now you've got a Lela Majnu coming, the modern version. So, what's going to be that story? What's different about this Lela Majnu? Um, about Lela Majnu, I guess um, you watch the film and then I'll ask you this question. But I think about young people. Uh, the most common mistake that all of us make is to think that they just want to have fun. I feel more and more that the younger generation, the every every coming younger generation, is more and more interested in finding meaning. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, so many people reach out because they uh, they just want something to hold on to. What was fun for the previous generation is not what they are looking for in their relationships. Um, that's what I that's what I feel. I think that's been a big revelation for me. And uh, uh, in Leila Majnu, of course, there is, you know, the fact that uh, a classic love story is eternal and it is relevant far more than, you know, the short lives of people like you and me. So that's the aspect that I wanted to explore about Leila and Majnu, because, and I do not obviously cater to the view that pyar pehle zamane mein hua karta tha, ab to sirf Tinder hota hai. Yeah. And that's the thing. So now we're in the age of love, you know, love in the age of hashtags and love, and people are swiping right and they're doing all of that. So I'd love for each of you to give a piece of advice to this audience that is, you know, probably stuck in this phone trying to find the love of their life. You know, which we kind of come from a very different generation of finding love. So Ranveer, would you like to begin? Um, when um, before I met my wife, they want they want these apps um, where you find people. Uh, today, because I because we interact with a lot of young people on the shows that we do, for th for us to meet somebody, we had to have a conversation or work on a set or in an you know you need to meet people to know whether you like that person. Here, people are just looking at people and doing this. We're like on a website, like products. Oh, I like this. I I don't understand it. For me, a relationship of any kind, friendship, love, anything has to happen, like. We are human beings, we are supposed to interact with each other. So I just, I don't understand. And I'm, we're not away from that generation, we're in the same generation. It's just that, like he said, they think they just want to have fun. Right now what's happening is you're so busy in your life, you have so many events, there are so many cultural things happening in India, uh, you have so many places where you can watch content that you don't think you actually need uh, physical compatibility. You're busy with your video games, you're busy with your phone, their social media, but when these things die down, uh, the, the thrill and the frill of these things, you actually need a human being to share and discuss your emotions. You can't do it with the TV or the screen. And that for young people is difficult to understand. They will, that is what people say, with age and experience and time you learn. If they could learn from what we're saying, it'd be great, it, sooner the better. But I've seen a lot of kids just Oh, I'm just having fun, I'm just having fun and, and suddenly you're 35 and you're like, everybody's not as lucky as Neha and Angad. Well done, really. In fact, Neha, I'd love your perception of this and your experience of it, you know, because like Ranveer is saying, you're kind of crossover, you've been on social media a lot and you actually use social media to announce your relationship. But what is your advice now looking back at the way people also reacted and would you share it again and what's your advice? Um, you mean share the fact that I got married? I'm sorry. I think a combination, a piece of advice to everyone about love and then this is interesting that people reacted to you this way with the yeah, 600 messages. No, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm not saying that we're a different generation. Of course, we are the same generation, we're, we're sort of 10 years too early. That's why we enjoyed the romance and 10 years too late because we're not on those online dating apps. Now, the thing is that I've got nothing against it. People are using it, people are busy, their lives are their phones, and if everything is pocket content, why not dating? Now, here's the thing, if they don't have time, 
and they want to put themselves out there and if they want to meet new and interesting people, why not? The question is, will I be able to do it? I don't think so. I'm, I'm a lot more sort of old school, orthodox, and I feel like it somewhere takes the romance out of it. But then when I hear stories saying, I'm, I, I ask people, how do you meet? And they were like, oh, we met on an online dating app. And I'm just like, that's great. So there's, a, there's a different kind of romance, but I feel like, you know, it's like online shopping and then you want to touch and feel a product before buying it. I'm the touch and feel guy. So yeah, it's, it's literally that for me, <laughs> if you know what I mean. The whole picture being created in everyone's minds now, but what about you, Karan? Uh, <laughs> I'm just telling you about Karan's shopping. He's an online shopper. <laughs> yeah. But for clothes. <laughs> for clothes. <laughs> and shoes. <laughs> and shoes. I mean, of course, on calling Karan, you're giving everyone very specific advice for their problems, you know, but if there was a generic piece of advice for this swipe right generation, what would it be? I mean, there's so much advice is very specific to a situation, but what I always say is that, you know, don't be worried about, break, uh, about breaking your heart or a broken heart, because I think that there's something very strong about like even a broken heart, it can empower you in so many ways. And I think we get so terrified of like being heartbroken or being hurt and that sometimes you stay away from the possibility of a relationship. Uh, but I I feel it's fine because, you know, it could, like I said earlier, it could completely empower you and uh, sometimes when something breaks, it solidifies you to a larger extent and I think that I would tell anybody, like, just jump right into it, yeah, it's fine. So what if you won't get reciprocated with the same amount of love? So what if sometimes the intensity doesn't match yours? But what you will go through, that feeling of love that you will feel, it will nurture you in many, many ways. Yeah, no, and, and I absolutely agree with that and you have to go through those experiences, otherwise you never learn how to love better until you have enough heartbreak. You'll never really improve who you no, are. I think you haven't yeah. lived. Like, I think, yeah. I, I think actors who haven't had broken hearts don't perform the way they should. I mean, you know, I feel like go out there, just if you're a good actor, you must have had a broken heart. It's not possible yeah, otherwise. For you to kind of depict a certain amount of emotion on celluloid, sometimes your eyes do depict your heart story. And, you know, I think many of them whose eyes speak volumes, they've been through that journey in life. Absolutely, and you can see it, you can feel it when that happens. Now you might get a call from a young budding actor saying, Sir, I am in a relationship, how do I get my heart open? I want to be a good actor. I want to be, and I am telling you it's happened, and I am sure Imtiaz knows exactly, you know, what I am talking about. He's directed such amazing actors, and I think he's made such beautiful emotional narratives, that you know that when an actor hasn't been through, just is touching the surface even in a scene, you know that the feeling doesn't come. Feeling nahi kyunke kaan se aayegi, feeling history se aayegi. And we also know that some people are actually, some actors are trying to go through that experience to become better actors. Yeah, I think many of them actually do that purposely sometimes. I think they traumatize themselves only so that they can perform better. And you know what I've always wanted to ask you, what happens next? You know, we always see the happy ending and we get to that point. And then, you know, the end credits start rolling. But what happens next? What happens after, happily ever after? And that's, I think, the piece missing. Kids. No, but so, so but that's it then, at the end were, of it. If you were going to tell the rest of that movie. Yeah, for every movie it would be a different mm -hmm. uh, uh, ever after. Uh, there's no ever after, I think. There's only just a changing scenario all the time. So I think for many movies I do have a thought that this is what would have happened and none of them were actually better or so good rather than just putting the, the end where it was. So I am very happy that there was, no, there was no time that you saw what happened in the relationship between Geet and Aditya that is in Jab We Met. Sure. What happened in that relationship and uh, yeah, in Love Aajkal and so on and so forth. So it's never better than <laughs> the end. I think the great thing about being a filmmaker is that you can control the narrative to the way you like it. Like I get asked so many times like in Edil and Mushkil, why did, why did Anushka have cancer and why did she have to die? I'm like, she didn't love him, so in my way, I was like, kill her, you know, because, <laughs> because it, was, it was in many ways, it was a slice of my life and I've yeah. been through that feeling and sometimes you just wish that that person who doesn't give you love should die. So here I had the power of doing it, I killed her. You, you know, I want to ask this question to everyone, if you don't mind. Um, and usually this que I've, I've had a slight conversation about this with... Um, Neha has a question. So sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, no, like I've, I've had a little bit of a conversation with Karan about this and I feel he's very bohemian when it comes to, you know, um, this aspect of being in love. 
I'm going to start with you, Ran. What, as far as you're concerned, what according to you is the ultimate deal breaker in a relationship and so on and so forth? Not on. taking a bath for one, 100%. Sorry? Not taking a bath, 100%. <laughs> Great advice. Um, lying. Lying. You, you do anything and if, if you know that I'm your guy, I'll be there, I'll get you out of the situation or I'll try anything. But if you lie to me, then I'm not your guy. Simple. Uh, my intention is not to spark off a debate, Karan, but would you be okay with that? Like if yeah, you're… Yeah. yeah? Yeah? I have no problem. Uh, so, uh, uh, <laughs> so, what I, would be the… <laughs> what would be a deal breaker for you? I mean, I don't… like a… like I don't want to… when you said bohemian, I'm not bohemian. I'm just more of a realist. <laughs> and I think that sometimes you lie in relationships. You lie about like, you know, sometimes even sexual infidelity, sometimes I should… I feel should not be considered infidelity because sometimes you slip in a moment. It I, I mean, want you to… I want it, you to jump it in. It right doesn't mean… This. it doesn't mean <laughs> that you should break off your relationship because one of you had a sexual moment with somebody yes, else, it, it happened. Okay, does. okay, question, current, no, no. current. Uh -huh. Question for you, why, why, why not? So sexual infidelity will I'm, not… I'm saying it's not, it's situation specific. You have to go into why it happened and if you own up to it and you chat about it, it doesn't mean you should end your relationship. Maybe it was something that you slipped and it happened in a moment and it's fine. Would Things you, happens. If it happens, don't lie about it. Let the other person decide what right. has to be done. Yeah, but, but don't lie about it. Sometimes you have to lie also. Would you be okay? Not <laughs> always. Sometimes <laughs> you have to lie. Here's the thing. If she went on a shoe because she doesn't want me to be upset with it. Oh no. That's okay. <laughs> that's clever. That's, that's smart. Lie. That's actually smart. The, these like my mom and everybody says are white lies. It's okay. But if something like that happens, the first so thing… For example, let me give you a situation. She meets like um, an old friend. Hey! If she yeah. meets, suppose she met an old friend. Hey. Someone… Suppose, <laughs> suppose someone she met an old friend and they, they had a vibe and they just spoke but nothing happened and you know she had whatever and whatever and you said, what did you do tonight? And she said, nothing, I stayed in. Now that is… she didn't do anything so she, why should she lie and break your heart for no reason? Because she nothing happened. She should tell me she had a vibe. She no, should but tell why? Me. Why are you let becoming me, this Justice me. Chaudhary? Because <laughs> next time I won't send her there alone. No more vibing. <laughs> Are nahi yaar. You also, you, even you, man, you, you are allowed I tell to her. once in a while. I tell her. No, I think that's that's but this Satya Mev Jayate now that we can't come back now. <laughs> <laughs> this now… <laughs> okay, no, so. I'm going to pass this on to Imtiaz. I'm going to pass this to you. I'm going to come to you, yeah. Malini as well. So… It would be nice if you come to Malini. She's meant to moderate this session. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go for it. It's a good Not question. you. It's a good question. It's a good question. Uh, no, go I'm… Yeah, you go ahead, go ahead. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so, Imtiaz, <laughs> lying, sexual infidelity or is it something else? I think the only reason, the only deal breaker is the fact that you don't want to be with the person anymore. Correct. I was just going to say that, falling out of love. Yeah, if you fall out of love, then that's the only deal breaker. Deal Everything breaker. else, like whatever, you know, floats the boat, I feel. Sometimes things that you think you will not pardon, you do because you get to know the specifics of them. Sometimes you think that things are not important but then when it happens, it becomes important. I think ultimately, if I were to ask myself honestly, if I want to be with a person, I be, I'll be with her anyway. And have you ever been in love with someone but still cheated on them? No. Okay. I, do, I don't think it's possible actually. Why? It's not. If you're in love… <laughs> I love you should have season if 12. You have that, if you have that instinct, <laughs> if you have that instinct, it has not happened. I mean, I, you know, I would have liked my life to be richer in those aspects, but it's not very. So, um, the few examples that I can think of, it hasn't happened to me and I don't think it's possible. Maybe it is and I'll tell Karan, Karan, help me, but Are not hota yaar. I'm telling you, you're a very role model type of people. I think there's a mix of it, right? <laughs> yes, Malini, please. I'm, honestly, I think there's a, there's a fine, I, there is a fine line about uh, infidelity, but I think… You tell us, Malini. It's yes, respect. Malini, tell us. What? Yes, yes, you respect. want to know. Respect is the most important thing. Once the respect is gone, then it's over. What? You disrespect… No, but you respect… I'm so married. Is that it? There's no respect. Ask Ranvijay, there's no respect. There's no respect. No, no. <laughs> no sometimes… Ask Priyanka, I think there's no respect. No, I think in, in some layers also disrespect public, publicly, right? It might be that you have certain things that you've gone through, you've had a relationship which has gone through its ups and downs for reasons. But I think as soon as you start disrespecting the other person publicly, that's when you, that means that you just don't care. So is it okay to disrespect behind closed doors? No, I think if you're able to have the conversation, if you're, I think that at some point if you are not, like Karan is saying, if something happens and you're able to work through it, that's different. If you're just saying, well, you know, deal with it, my way or the highway, that's different. Karan? 
I mean, I have all kinds of theories on relationships and I think to sum this all up that you'll find okay, well, all now, kinds, you'll find all kinds of perspectives and, and I respect everyone's opinion. I just feel like I've spoken to so many couples and so many relationships and I feel like we get very virtuous and very judgmental immediately. But like dive into the situation, find out what the details are, what happened, where the infidelity source is, why it happened, talk about it, there may be an inherent problem, discuss it. Don't end the relationship and walk out just because it's like, you cheated on me, I'm leaving you it, it's not so simple you know Eventually, there is a lot everyone more everyone has their and own. we live in the yeah. gray we don't yeah. live in the black or white we live in the gray all of us have gray thoughts gray actions gray lives and we cannot be judgmental of others shades, yeah we are many I mean, not the way 50 shades of gray has it um uh, but i mean we are like a thousand shades of gray each yeah. one of us sitting in this auditorium and okay. on stage Karen, com coming back to the show okay i know that in season one you had some incredible callers and you also had some celebrity interaction you so do, what was your most memorable uh, none, nothing really so memorable because uh, one talks to celebrities at a given point of time. So it's not that I was like, oh my God, this one called me. Uh, uh, <laughs> because like I wasn't jumping out You're of my... You're breaking a heart. Oh, please. Yeah. Yeah. We all called you. Thanks. No, God. I wasn't really jumping out of my undergarments when I got a call from a celebrity. <laughs> but I was like, great, Nick Neha called. And I, I think you asked me a question, didn't you? Yeah, I asked yeah, you a question. Did, yes. yeah. So it was wonderful. Thank you. Uh, and uh, we had lots of amazing callers. And I had uh, Sid, Varun, and Ali also acting cute and asking me very <laughs> millennial love questions, which was fun. There were lots of those kind of like people, but it, there was nothing memorable. But it was a lot of fun. I'm sure. What was memorable for me were the real life callers. I mean, I'm that sure, to yeah. me was amazing. Are you ever going to use those situations? Do you think in a film? Lots of them. Yeah. I can't tell you, it opens my head up. I would tell every filmmaker to get into that room once and just listen to those people and their problems because truly, Imtiaz, and I say this with all earnestness, the kind of people and the lives they lead and what they say is extremely, like, enlightening. Well, it must be really exhausting because it's a big responsibility. That's why you I don't can't do it for very long, no, because you're yeah, really exactly. getting into each call. It's like you're playing therapist, yeah, yeah, psychiatrist, yeah. mother, father, agent, everything. Yes, yeah, you're just kind of like saying everything like, you know, to them and you take back some of their problems. Sometimes the heavy calls can really get to you as well. And you know, I think if we're honest, like on the stage, people expect us to never, you know, confess or reveal anything about ourselves. So I'd like everyone here, and I'll do it as well, make a confession. You start. <laughs> we'll see the degree of confession also. The degree of confession. Confession kiss bare mein? Like about what? About love, something that you've experienced. Hmm. Okay, I will start, I will start. So one of the things that I'm guilty of, and I think it happens in social media a lot, is actively stalking exes. And I think, yeah, right? How do you stop? And I think, so a lot of people have actually asked me as well, saying, you know, I see this person, I try not to look. It's impossible, right? You can't go around blocking everything they do because it's going to pop up and it's going to hurt. I think the thing to remember then is that there's somebody else's problem. Now the problem is, and my confession is, as while I was talking an ex, I accidentally liked their picture. Mm. And then I had to unlike it. So this whole process is very obvious to everyone. And then there's no explaining that. Ex explaining. Okay, no. Neha, what do you want to... To bowl. I bowl. Okay, so all the men I dated, I never married. And the man I married, I never dated. Oh, nice. That's the confession. <laughs> All the men, as in they want so many, but... That's a very <laughs> convenient confession to have. But you're all those are all. You're all the men. <laughs> all. all the men. Sorry. Do you have to wait till the show? I don't know what to say. Because <laughs> my confessions are dangerous. Imtiaz is seeking... I want to say mine before Karan's. Because yeah. after that... Imtiaz's be like... confession is seeking him. Imtiaz, confess. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking. There's nothing... No pressure, huh? <laughs> yeah. There's no mistake I have not made in matters of love. Um, sometimes I wish that I was as wise as some of the characters of my film. These are not the confessions. This is, this is like, I'd say them at any time. But I'm not as wise as many of the characters of my movies are. Um, maybe... The fact that I don't get this feeling of being in love or understanding this concept at all, maybe I don't understand it at all, is the reason that I make films that are about love. Mm. That's a good confession. And it's not a smart thing to say. 
It would be nice <laughs> like to hear this applause, but it's actually true for me. Who's going to go next? Ranvijay or Karan? Yeah, no, I think we'll no. let Karan go last. Yeah, yeah. I have, I'm trying to think, I don't know what to say. So oh, many. After having said what my problem is in a relationship which is lying, uh, I, I hope this doesn't, my, my, does, my wife doesn't really uh, follow social media too much. Even if she does something of whatever that vibing was and she lied, I know, like you said, because I'm in love with her, I'd, I'd let her go. That's what I was trying to explain to you. But I, I know for sure she won't. <laughs> I will. Yeah. I've, and it's, that's not okay with her. Because she thinks because it's okay with me to say I let it go, it should be okay for her also. But that's not true. But I know in my heart that I'll be okay. I won't be okay with it, but I let it go over a period of time. Don't tell her. It's already been tweeted, sir. She's not on Twitter. <laughs> Ah, uh, what, what do I admit to? I don't know. Do you have any suggestions? Why are you sweating? <laughs> I don't know. Like, <laughs> don't because don't tell them a real one. It's okay. Okay, <laughs> don't sweat so much. I'm not sweating. I just... Yeah, no, you can say it. Can you? Yes, yeah, say it on the mic. You can say it. You can May say I? this confession. Yes. You can say it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to confess on Karan's behalf and this is a true story that um, there was someone he was um, in love with and he was flying from New York to London and he broke up with that person because the only thing he had on his mind that time was that he was flying to London and he could only think of Selfridges. So he chose shopping over the love of his life. It was not love of my life, it was <laughs> but, a my relationship. Yeah. I just felt that I really wanted to buy those pair of shoes. So anyway. <laughs> It's as simple as that. But that's, it just, it, it just this meant, is no great. It just this meant is that I wasn't white. that deeply involved. And yeah. I told you that story and I can't believe that was the story you were going to tell everyone. It's it was not so, it was not, it was not a confession, it was a real life situation. But Karan, so you've had uh, so many guests on the show and I think that you're very honest and you're quite raw about your answers. Is there anything that you said so far that you regret, that you're like, oh shit, I took that too far? Especially about, you know, maybe a public figure? No I, no, I don't regret anything I said. Sometimes I think I get a little like upset with the situation and I tend to get very, um, uh, well, animated about my emotion at that point of time. And sometimes I feel like, why am I getting so involved, <laughs> you know, in this situation? But like, like, there was this man who just, actually I shouldn't talk about it, season two. We'll talk about it later. I can't believe right, it's a situation right. that got me really upset. You'll probably hear the call in season two. So what, like give us a couple of examples of the things that you think it's okay to call and ask. What is it that you encourage people to come and ask? Well, there are all kinds of, I mean, the one thing that I really realized this time, the deep amount of office romances that happen. Really? There's so many office romances and some are hinging on even infidelity. Some are like, you know, you know, then there's also like exploitation romances and there is like, you know, like, boss and assistant romances mm -hmm. and then there is pushing the power button in office romance and there are lots of office dynamics and workspace dynamics mm -hmm. that come up a lot and sometimes they are fun situations, some of them are really kind of tragic as well when people feel that they just because and what was interesting is once there was a woman who called and uh, a man actually called sorry and said that his female boss was like exploiting him and I thought that was such a refreshing problem uh, because it's always the other way around and I'm like well done whoever this woman was and I was like yeah but I didn't say that and he was really traumatized he said she keeps wanting to have sex with me and I don't want to because I'm her junior and I'm scared the word will get out and sometimes some offices have policies against like people getting into romances. Not sometimes, yeah, every it's actually, time. Yeah, yeah so there are, All I, mean, so there, so the, I, I mean, I discovered that, I don't know, I suddenly started walking on the corridors of my own office wondering like what must be happening here because I'm here, because I was like, I'm thinking it's a legit environment of people working, but clearly not. And sometimes, you know, many a time when, you know, people are missing from their like cabins, I now know what's happening. So there's something I'd love to ask everyone here because now, at some degree, I also feel like I'm a little older and wiser about relationships, right? What is one piece of advice that you wish you could go back and give yourself about love? No advice at all. <laughs> In fact, my only advice about love is please do not follow any advice at all. And I'm not saying there's a uh, to Karan's show, etc., <laughs> but a broad stroke, a broad stroke would be, like I wouldn't go back and, I would, uh, and give advice to myself at all. Anyone else? Would you give yourself any advice? <laughs> uh, there, there it might to, help people, so there, why not? There have to be no parameters about falling in love. 
It could be anything. It could be anything that makes you fall in love. Once you have a problem there, then you call him. Call Karan. Please call. <laughs> Neha? I mean, um, I, I always, um, just the basic stuff, you know, and I feel like most importantly in this day and age, everyone, after a certain point, they want to do their own thing. So I think space would be a good thing. Space and respect would be a good thing. But, I mean, I can, I can go on and on. But right now, like Imtia said, there are no rules and, you know, I, I just have learned one thing about men is that, and this is just to all the women out there, and I know that the TG of this audience is a bit younger, that men have really fragile egos. Sometimes you really have to treat them like kids and be like, you know, let them say oh, whatever What do you mean want. by that? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> How dare you? You know, and, and you just have to. You have to, you have to treat them with kid gloves and you have to just be like, it's okay and… I'm going to right away. I know a lot of things. It's important to make the demarcation between ego and self-respect. Yeah. And I think your ego should be flexible. Ego is the most unproductive emotion that exists exactly. in your… in the DNA of a human being. It should totally be flexible. So what you must totally hold on to is your self-respect. That is the fulcrum of a strong relationship. And the one thing that I, I, I would like everyone here in this auditorium and people who are listening or hearing, whatever, is the one thing I would advise people to not do is PDA. It's the most unbearable thing when people are in a relationship. I'm like, get a room, go to the toilet, go to the washroom, do it in any other place, not in front of the whole world. We don't want to see you smothering each other's faces but in public. It's really I annoying. I have to say, have you know, I went by it. reclamation. So basically the last few rows, so much hey. <laughs> Those guys in the dark, we're going to put the light I mean, on you. It's easy to say also on some degree, but there's a lot of people who don't have anywhere to go. No, it may be so, and that I understand, but I, the people I've seen indulge in PDA have, have many them. places to go, you know, and I want to tell you, why do you need to hold someone's hand also, like what? They are fine, they can walk on their own. You know, why are you holding their hand? Unless you need to help them up the stairs or something, she has a bad knee or he has a bad foot or a broken knee. Why are you holding hands? Why are you kissing each other? Why are you playing with each other's hair? Why have a question for Karan here? Why is it upsetting you so much? It's bloody <laughs> annoying. I'm like, like, listen, why? keep it why? in your pants. <laughs> Who do you call? Because you have problems. You, huh? you gotta call someone. Who do you call? My conscience. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but so, so actually, exactly what you're saying. If I could give myself some advice, it would be don't be so clingy. So literally, clingy I think... Clingy is okay. Know. Chalo, that's exciting. Yeah, but you're not literally physically yeah. clinging. That is very annoying. I want to wake up and slap those couples across their face. I can't tell you. Wow. I feel... Deep amounts of violence when I see couples. It sounds like this season is going to be a little more aggressive. So, what are you going to do? Is it going to be bolder? I've been told it's going to be more. It is bolder. It's, it's bigger because it's bolder. It's the fact that we have a season two uh, shows that there was love in season one. Hopefully, that's why we've been sanctioned with the season two. And uh, it's amazing. And I think the one thing that works in the show is the candidness and the honesty in which I think the way we try to give our advice as, as in the team and, and me specifically when I'm speaking to callers, I don't hold back at all. Like, I'm not playing it safe. I'm seeing it as is and hopefully the repercussions and ramifications are positive. All right. Okay, I'm going to ask each one of you, if you were Karan and somebody was calling you, what do you think you would tell them if they just... I'm going to ask you each a question, okay? And then Karan can tell you if that's the same advice. Oh, like answer as in we were as, Karan? Yeah, okay. as Karan would. Okay. This, is, this feels like an exam now. It's an exam, yeah, basically. So if someone called you and said that they are in love with their best friend's girlfriend, I don't know if you've got this question. Before. I know the answer. Oh, you, you want to finish the question or should I just No, go for it. Yeah. Best so, friend. best friends, best friends, girlfriend. So, Karan would say that, listen, I think you should be completely honest and you should go for it if you're in love. Uh, is she in love with you? And if the answer to that is yes, she's also turned around and said that, yeah, a couple of times she's in love with me. Then, it would definitely be that, be honest everywhere. Don't break three hearts, just break one. That's the guy in the middle. And that's what Karan would say. Wrong. Uh, I would say that's not cool. What would you say? Because, I mean, if she's, he's your best friend and that's the girlfriend, then that's the, out of boundary. That is something that I don't... I think boundaries are... Oh, very yes, I know this answer. Interest of course I know. This, yeah. how, that's you, can't, you can't break how the bro code. Oh, I forgot. Bro code. Yeah. Your, how did you even get interested in your best friend's girlfriend? How did even... How did, 
it should happen yeah ho jata hai sometimes you're right but agar ho jata hai sometimes you can get interested yeah or sometimes no but i'm saying agar ho jata hai then you should break one heart i feel like you have to just be very you have to be clean cut that dynamic it's not cool it's not cool you don't do that to your best friend i mean that's not it doesn't happen sometimes it happens with like i got a call with saying that i fell in love with my my brother's girlfriend i've got that as well you know and like i'm like that is not cool at all but there are where people i mean the shit happens you can fall in love you can feel emotion but you can't go through with it because that's where that will power really comes in yeah absolutely that's my advice thank yeah, you but no it's perfect <laughs> may i or yours is you can't not. argue no, with no, you can't argue with you no but run in my defense it's happened now what do you do and if she's reciprocated also if she's reciprocated then you must go and tell the best friend that tu kar kya raha hai no but that's what i'm saying why are you hanging around with this girl and you're not doing anything you have to give him your show in the aina पर ये लड़के बेवकूफ होते हैं उनको ये लड़की के लिए सही नहीं है राइट दैट गर्ल इज नॉट गुड फॉर माय बेस्ट फ्रेंड आई जस्ट से कि वो डोरे डाल रही मुझ पे मैं भी डोरे डाल रहा हूं तो मुझ पे मुझे तो छोड़ दे तू वहां से निकल ला ओके ओके ऑप्शन बी गिवन अदर क्वेश्चन आई डोंट लाइक बीइंग ओके नो आई हैव टू मूव अराउंड टू मूव ऑन यस आई थिंक शी हैज अ ओके इफ देयर्स इफ यू इफ समवन कॉल्ड यू एंड सेड लुक दे मेड अ कॉल समवन कॉल्ड मी और कॉल्ड करण कॉल करण सॉरी आई एम सॉरी इफ यू आर करण इफ समवन कॉल्ड एंड सेड लुक आई मेड अ कमिटमेंट आई गॉट मैरिड आई एम नाउ लाइक Full deeply in this relationship, but I am. Do I am done? I need to get out. That's What a no-brainer. Karan would say, just move out. What's the what, What's the question? What's the big Correct. deal? Just get out. Exactly. You are right. That's what I, I got. The tough one. <laughs> Go. Okay. Uh, gosh, you're a tough one because now you have. I know you have very specific beliefs. But okay, now you're answering as Karan. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if somebody called you and said that, look, I made a horrible mistake. I in a moment in a drunken party I hooked up with someone but it doesn't mean anything should I tell my partner or no 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 don't tell Let him run he got one Oh sorry Karan would say hello have you Yeah okay. it says wrap up there Check <laughs> Yeah we almost there Jaldi bol but on my mic Beasti beasti ho gayi wo I have to <laughs> So he would definitely say if if they're still in it and it's a mistake, he would say don't tell. He would say that, don't tell because it doesn't. It's in the past. It won't happen again. And you move on. Don't break whoever's heart. Yeah, yeah. I would totally say don't tell. Yeah. There's no point in giving extra information. I think honesty is very overrated. I mean, you know, please. There's no reason to be extra honest with your boyfriends and girlfriends. There's no need for no rhyme or reason. Why do you want to create a situation unless you're a drama queen or king and you're you're wanting that attention? Otherwise, अरे थोड़ा बहुत यहाँ बात कर लिया तो ठीक है ना? I don't have to go and give information. Alright, finally to wrap this up because we have wrap up written in front of us. Okay, so um. Now we're in the age of Tinder profiles and all kinds of dating apps, and they ask you to answer some interesting questions, some pretty crazy ones. So I'm going to ask you each one, not the entire list, okay? And how you would answer it. Um, Neha, you have to fill in your best physical attribute. <laughs> they really ask these questions. It's true. I'm not lying. It's not my face. That's what you say. All right. current your uh, quirky habit or skill my quirky habit <laughs> <laughs> what is my quirky habit no no i can't no no i can't no no don't see you really <laughs> uh quirky habit i don't know i'm trying to uh, what is my quirky habit but you have to say what's coming to your mind no no i'm really like uh, as in where but you decide it's for your <laughs> in, in, the, in the bedroom in the office at home where you have to well, why don't you guys tell us where where do you want this quirky habit from bedroom sarum yeah in go obviously that is coming no he sees he's fidgety <laughs> all right i i'm Safe. i'm just going to make it very uh, pg13 and say that uh, i can type without looking <laughs> well that could mean so many things okay uh if they ask for you the title of your memoir he wasn't there <laughs> <laughs> yes. it wasn't Hi. me okay and finally ranvijay the worst idea you ever had <laughs> coming on this panel <laughs> <laughs> worst idea i ever had have you tried something that's real having Why do I know so much about everyone? <laughs> Almost too much. Boy, it's not a bad habit. Worst 
idea I ever had. Yeah. Has to do with yeah, in, in the sense that this is what's going to be representative of you on your dating profile. On my dating profile, worst idea I had. You want to answer for me because you know me so well, like you were answering for me. I feel for bad. I feel like I'm answering for everyone and getting into trouble. No, answer for me. This will be easier. I haven't dated what? for five years. So I don't know. Worst idea he ever had. On my dating profile, what would it be? Worst idea you ever had. Yeah, why would that's just uh, how yeah, he should that's write how his on a dating profile the worst yes. idea? No, yeah, that's so what they ask you. Now, what um, do you say? They do. I, I'll ask so you, this, you have to I'll lie. I'll answer this is Ran Vijay. <laughs> yeah. He's good on bikes, so he should probably write, I ride well. Wow, all right. Oh. There you go. Well, that's I'm just saying it. I'm just saying it for him. <laughs> I'm getting visuals now. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, of course, Sorry. <laughs> we are leaving you with that visual. But last message from you, Karan, calling Karan, why they should be calling you? You should call me because you are definitely going through a crisis. And I, am going, and I am going through a midlife crisis. So both of us could make a great team of crisis. There you go. 104.8 FM calling Yay! Karan. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> There's this one definition of love that's very common amongst us. That love means putting the other person's need above your own need. How far do you agree with that? I don't think you should be in any imbalanced situation. And what you're suggesting is an imbalanced situation. Yeah. So there's no such thing as putting somebody else's needs. Why should his needs or her needs be more than yours? There should be an equal give and take where it comes to needs, desires, requirements compatibility, etc. It comes from an equality. Equality is the basis of a strong relationship. Nobody should put anybody else's needs higher than theirs. Why should you? That itself imbalances a relationship. And an imbalanced relationship is an unsuccessful relationship. Can I take one last question? All right, the lady in the black, will that be your choice? Yeah. Hi, Hi, Ritika. Wait for the mic, Ritika. Scream, it's fine, I can hear you. Uh, no, not all of them. Uh, I think one or two of them actually I floored and fumbled with. And in retrospect, when I look back at some parts of those movies, I cringe and I feel terrible that I actually subjected an audience to those portions. Uh, but some of them got fortunate, some of them got lucky, and some other parts in that movie perhaps made them reach a certain success mark. But I'm not proud and happy with each and every one of them. In fact, I've yet to make a film that I entirely love. I, and I just Hello. tell you Hello. something. I love Ranbir Kapoor a lot. That's a question? <laughs> no. You yes. like Ranbir Kapoor a lot? Yeah. That's wonderful. Can you please make him meet me someday? <gasps> make him meet you someday? <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> you said I was raw. This is as raw as it gets. Not possible. Sorry. Oh, fantastic. Karen? Thank you so much, guys. Karen? Thank you so Karen? much, Karen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Hi, hello, the ones who don't stalk her. Don't stalk her? Yeah. That's the one that she'll block? Yeah. Or you mean the ones that stalk her? No, the, the ones who don't stalk her. Oh, wow. She's an yeah, that's seeker. right, 2018. For sure. So, that Lela is an attention seeker who wants weirdos. So, she's not going to block anyone who's a weirdo. Exactly. Nice. Nice. That's a good one. What is Majnu's wildest fantasy? To go across that hill. That, that one, yeah. To go across that is his wildest fantasy. Right, pretty much. What makes Lela laugh hysterically? <laughs> Weirdos, stalkers again. Okay, okay. Lela and Majnu kind of sort of, we have an image now coming to us. What is Majnu's biggest insecurity? Uh, that someone will actually ask him a question he doesn't have the answer for. That's his insecurity. Okay. What is the most daring thing Lela has ever done? <laughs> most daring thing? Yeah. Um, going to college without makeup? Ooh. <laughs> okay, what is the meanest thing Majnu has ever done? Meanest? Yeah. Spoken the truth.
Yeah, that was very mean. It's like Mahesh Bhatt says to me, um, don't shit on my head and call it honesty. Fair point there. I'm not going to take any more of your time because we have to show you the teaser of Leila Majnu, which is coming up right now. So we'll take the corner so that they can have the screen to themselves. Let's take a look now.